All right, now let's go to Florida Congressman Matt Gates live with his prediction State of the Union. But uh, Matt, before we do that, just tell me, you just got back from Iowa. A lot going on. This is all good for Trump, is it not? We saw tremendous enthusiasm for the president and the Republican caucuses. There were a record-breaking number of folks who came out to caucus for the president when you consider the political circumstances. We obviously don't know who won the Iowa caucuses yet between Sanders and Buttigieg, but we sure know who lost. That was Joe Biden. When you're the former vice president of the United States, you enter the campaign, the leader in every national poll, and you don't even make the medal stand in Iowa. You don't even make the top three. I mean, you had Sanders and Warren functionally chained to their desks in Washington listening to this impeachment nonsense, while Joe Biden had Iowa all to himself going up and down the court with the opportunity to score uncontested layups, and he couldn't even do that. So I think that we're in the death rattle phase of the Joe Biden campaign, because if you can't even make the top three in Iowa as the former vice president, it is not a good look. Yeah, and you really have to weigh in on this uh, for us, Matt. When you're there, I mean, it was blowing everyone away, the Internet. We couldn't believe that the results weren't coming out. Turns out this company that was involved in uh, um, generating a new app to deliver election results, not only were they part of a, a lot of more part of the Hillary Clinton campaign, but it failed miserably. I mean, Brad Parscale, we're going to have mine, he talks about how, how they expect anyone, these people, to run the country if they can't even figure out an app. Democrats are always accusing us of the stuff they're doing. Democrats always say it's all the Republicans and the Trump supporters eroding our institutions in America when they broke the Iowa caucuses by trying to tell us that they had an app that would solve all our problems when they've been doing this for quite some time in Iowa uh, their own way and, and we're doing fine without having the Democratic National Committee tell them what to do. But this is, I think, a microcosm of the broader challenges Democrats face with just effectiveness. And that's where President Trump's comments tonight will focus, how mm -hmm. effectively he's handled the economy. The Gallup poll has come out and shown the highest approval rating for the president in that poll uh, during his time in office and 63% of Americans approving of the Trump policies of lower taxes, lower regulation, and I think perhaps most importantly, standing up for our workers on trade, not being dead money at the global ta table when we're negotiating with China and even our allies in our hemisphere. You know, Matt, uh, you, you mentioned the State of the Union um, a little bit earlier, just a couple hours ago. Um, AOC announced that she was going to boycott uh, the State of the Union, as well as a couple of our friends, Ayala Presley, will also boycott. There were 14 that boycotted it last year and have consistently done that, but these are newbies, and, and, and they're basically saying they don't like the way Trump is treating them, they don't like the way the country's going, they're boycotting. Do you want to weigh into your t t t uh, directly towards your colleagues? Yeah, I mean, that's really disappointing. For, yeah, that's really disappointing for my colleagues, uh, who I've always found willing to listen to me. But this is the problem we have in our country, Eric. People are willing to listen to each other even when they disagree. I don't agree with AOC, but I'm willing to hear out her ideas and then have a robust debate about what's better for the people of our great nation. But increasingly, liberals, they don't want to hear what America First folks have to say, and so they want to delegitimize the content of your message by refusing to give you a platform to speak. Now, the president obviously is going to have a triumphant night. I expect he will do very well. He did very well when he has delivered a previous State of the Union addresses, but it, it just takes away from the national discussion when you have someone as high profile as Alex boycotting uh, because she, I guess, is, you know, too unable to hear out the president. It, it, it's, it's really beneath the dignity of the office to uh, be unwilling to participate in this time-honored and significant tradition for our country. You know, Matt, Hogan Gidley was on Fox earlier today, and he had said he read the, the speech, the actual written speech for what, what President Trump was, well, that was written for him or that he got involved in writing, and it did not mention the impeachment. But President Trump, as we all know, tends to go off script, go off prompter once in a while. You th I, I've never known him to be able to hold back. You think he'll throw a jab in there somewhere? <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if impeachment caught a glancing blow, but our president isn't delivering these remarks to focus on the past. He understands that with these economic opportunities, with GDP growth, with the fastest rising wages in a decade, with the lowest unemployment in 50 years, we have to be an opportunistic nation that looks forward. We need to understand that our best days are still ahead. The best is yet to come from the Trump presidency. I think dwelling on the past is something that the president won't do. And I think, frankly, the voters are going to see a contrast between the obsession with impeachments and investigations 
investigations and right. faraway lands like Ukraine and Russia and what the president is doing to speak to the kitchen table issues in our country. You know, you've, you've kind of bubbled up to the top of the Congress people, you know, elected officials who are pro-Trump, but also the ones he respects, and he, and he clearly respects you quite a bit. You know, I'm thinking, I'm looking at Wilbur Ross. He's getting up there in the age as he sleeps through some of the meetings. Great guy, but, you know, it's, maybe it's time for him to just enjoy his retirement a little bit. Matt, you'd be a great choice for a cabinet secretary like the Commerce Department. <laughs> I'm, no, well, I'm, very, but, but I see a guy who... I, I like who's, the job I have now. Oh, uh, that's what they all say. That's what they all say. But let's, before we let you go, we're going to have a little fun. Who did it better? Let's take a look at Nancy Pelosi with the Awkward Duck clap from last year. Oh. And now we will show you Ted Cruz from the Senate floor in the impeachment hearings from a couple days ago. Which one? Who did it better, Matt? <laughs> who did it better? Give me Ted Cruz because it was so sly. It was so <laughs> sneaky and, and, and it almost had like a charming impish quality with Ted Cruz. All right. We're going to leave it right there. Matt Gates, thank you very much and enjoy the State of the Union, my friend.